after a year of drafts and revisions, it's finally time to bring this sculpture to life. It's the biggest of its kind, with over 540 pieces and requiring over $1,000 worth of materials. This is going to be my third sculpture using resin 3D printing. It uses a liquid resin that is hardened with ultraviolet light. The resin is quite expensive, but I think it's worth it because it creates a super crisp, high quality print. More common filament based printers can't compete, especially with the really small pieces. Now after the printer finishes, the pieces are only partially cured and they're still covered in liquid resin. The messy nature of this process is probably why this kind of printing isn't that popular. It's not perfect and it's prone to errors, which can be costly given the expense of this resin. Because the pieces were only partially cured, they now need to be exposed to ultraviolet light for five minutes or so on each side to achieve their full strength. The larger pieces, they don't even fit in the machine. I let them sit out in the sun, which is really intense here, and that works great. The next step is the sorting process. There are 540 pieces, and I will be painting them with 12 colors, so I need to sort the pieces into groups. So numbering each piece is really important. Keeping all the pieces organized is one of the main challenges of this project. But I like challenges, and you know what else I like? Time lapses. This one is pretty good. Just look at that sunset. Now once all the pieces are sorted, I'm going to put the pieces on boards to prepare them for painting. These boards with the double-sided tape are really effective at keeping everything organized. I once got a comment asking why I waste my time putting the pieces on boards instead of using hangers to paint them. But I'm not sure my videos, especially the short ones, effectively convey just how many pieces there are and how putting them on hangers really isn't feasible. So now it's time to paint. I've mixed a gradient of 12 colors using artist acrylic paint and then thinned it with isopropyl alcohol to make them more fluid for spraying. The setup I'm using is just a basic paint sprayer with a one millimeter nozzle paired with an air compressor. This is similar to what might be used to paint a motorcycle or perhaps a bicycle. There are actually a total of four coats I'm just showing you one here. The first is a primer specifically for plastic. Then there are two coats of acrylic paint and finally a tough urethane clear coat finish. Now here is where things start to get real. After the paint has cured, I have laid out all the pieces and it's time to start assembling the sculpture. Taking one piece at a time, I use super glue to attach it to a sheet of fiberglass cloth. This is just a temporary assembly that keeps everything together before it's bonded with resin into a fiberglass composite. So now you can see the whole gluing process. This is about an eight hour time lapse. This fiberglass backing method adds many additional steps compared to screwing the pieces together. However, with screwing, there's a limit to how small the pieces can be. In a circular arrangement like this, without the smaller pieces, there'd be a much bigger hole in the center. So it was really essential to find a method that could incorporate even these tiny pieces. Now, my work involves a lot of chemicals like plastics, resins, paints, thinners, glues, and silicone. As an artist, I use these materials to achieve the specific effect and quality that define my art. Many people express concern about their safety and sustainability, but these materials are essential for the high quality results and unique finishes that set my work apart. While I always consider eco-friendly alternatives, they aren't always viable for every application. Some chemicals provide the durability, precision, and distinctive textures that are crucial for my creations. This allows for greater creativity and the ability to push artistic boundaries, ensuring that each piece is long-lasting and not destined for a landfill or an ocean. It's critical to balance this with a commitment to safety and environmental responsibility. I responsibly manage and dispose of any waste, constantly looking for ways to reduce waste and find more sustainable alternatives. 
In the end, responsibly using these materials allows me to create something that is truly unique and impactful. By ensuring each piece is durable and long-lasting, it's not only possible to achieve artistic excellence, but also contribute to a legacy of meaningful and sustainable art. The problem with plastics is that they end up in the landfill or in the ocean. And if this happens to my sculptures, then I failed at my job. And speaking of failure, I used a little bit less resin than I should have here, so the edges didn't fill in completely. So to fix this, I used a router to trim the edges, and then later I touched them up with filler and paint. As I install the hanging hardware, these final steps hold special significance. The hanging hardware ensures that the piece is ready to be displayed, transforming it from a project into a finished artwork. There's always a mix of anticipation and excitement as I prepare to unveil the final result. Will all the effort, precision, and attention to detail pay off? This moment is what makes the journey worthwhile. Signing the back is my personal seal of completion and authenticity. So here it is, the culmination of countless hours and thousands of little decisions. I think it's a success that captures what I envisioned. But what do you think?